sprays of the day. You can't miss them. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. You don't really even have to listen to the president anymore to discover what he's talking about. And for White House aides, that's the point. The American people are very busy uh, and sometimes don't, aren't able to listen to everything the president may say. And sometimes uh, the news media doesn't uh, uh, participate the way we like. The White House is so relentless about this that it's become nearly impossible to take a picture of Mr. Bush at an event and not show the big sign behind his head, too. Democrats find the whole thing very sinister. Almost Orwellian, as if they're trying to send subliminal messages. But hey, look who else has used this gambit. And that's Senate Majority Leader Tom Daschle with a big sign behind his head, too. Good evening, my fellow citizens. It didn't used to be this way. Presidents usually stood in front of sober, dull backdrops that didn't say anything. They wanted people to listen to them, not just glimpse them. But Ronald Reagan changed all that. He and his aides made the picture as important, or more important, than the president's words. We love freedom. And so it's come to this. And while editorial cartoonists are having a field day with the Bush White House's obsessive stagecraft, at least one presidential historian is worried. Democracy depends on our understanding issues with complexity and Americans taking some time to think. When you're dealing with these issues in two or three word slogans, Obviously, it's not great for our system. On the other hand, imagine what Mr. Bush's technique could have done for some of his predecessors, say, Abraham Lincoln, or maybe Teddy Roosevelt. Somehow, it just doesn't seem the same.